movementunes.com, the number one site for positive music downloading. Okay, what is your business? My business is energy efficiency. All right. Energy generation. Okay, and what modality do you use? We use every aspect of alternative energy. Okay, uh, such use, as? Such as solar, wind, and thermal. To, okay. To help develop uh, small energy economies. Okay, and what is the name of your company? The company is called Energen. Okay, how long has it been operating? Well, Energen as a brand company, uh, we launched it in January, but I've been doing research and development in the background for about three years. Okay, and what is your educational training? Yeah, I'm an industrial designer trainer at the Montfort University in England. Okay. So, which means we will cover like product design, product development, a whole range of stuff like that. Okay. Um, so let's talk about what you have right next to you right here. So what next to me right now, I have a photovoltaic panel. Mm -hmm. um, that is 205 watts of electricity harvesting is possible through this on a sunny day mm -hmm. um, which means that this panel here has tremendous capacity it's also a 11 amp um, power panel so as far as its charging capacity is very significant as well too so this basically would, 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 would form uh, one panel of a series that will help generate uh, whatever level of wattage that we want to create for to power a household, or to you know power a particular event, or to power any particular need that we have. Um, this will form the aspect of that. Okay, so let's talk about your company and what exactly you do with the solar energy. You know, you have some companies that deal with manufacturing, some deal with installation, some deal with consultation. What aspect do you deal with in terms of the services that you provide? Yeah. Well, right now our company is an is a industrial design company, meaning that we, we don't just import products and install it, but we actually look at the unique problems that islands have, unique problems that the, us in this tropical atmosphere have, and we try to work our way around them. So for example, uh, we develop a, a solar water heating system, thermal system, uh, using vacuum tube technology but a new type of vacuum tube that allows us in the tropical belt who have insularity of about 6.5, 5.5 very very high intensity heat um, not to heat water be below, above sorry uh, 200 sand degrees Fahrenheit because that's what can happen when you use vacuum tube technology in our climate but right now we control that temperature in the tube itself that we can get 60 degrees Celsius, we can get 70 degrees Celsius. We control how much temperature um, the sun um, actually generates. So that's just one aspect of thermal. What PV is concerned, what we do is look at the social needs and we design uh, photovoltaic systems to meet those social needs. So for example, we need to create jobs. So we look at how can we use solar energy to create jobs, uh, to help with retailing, the uh, vendors on the street selling vegetables, but can they open longer at night? If they have light being powered by a solar power system, can they um, have a better price because they don't have to pay the utility facility for the kind of electricity they're using? So those kind of social issues we are seeking to address as well. And then from the disaster right the side, because we're in the Caribbean, always getting hit and impacted with um, uh, hurricanes and stuff like that, and the probability that the, the oil might not necessarily be coming into the island. How are we prepared to still power certain things, keep our polyclinic medicine in top shape um, after something like that happens? So with solar, we can always ensure that we have refrigeration and stuff like that uh, available to, to meet some of our basic uh, needs on the island using solar. So that's the kind of thing that we're doing uh, more in industrial design and product design. In, in, in partnership with association with alternative energy. Okay, so what made you get into the alternative energy market? Well, to be honest with you, the alternative energy market, for any time I was at the Montfort University, was of interest. Um, the first project that we had uh, input into was a solar pump um, by one of my colleagues 
with one of my colleagues at the Montfort University, which was designed to pump water from the wells in Africa. And that was something like, uh, I left the Montfort University how long ago? 17 years ago, yeah? And then coming back here, I used to um, participate in a lot of activities that a guy named Professor Oliver Headley used to be involved in as well. And he used to push a lot on the solar energy. And uh, one of my other experiences was working with a team from England um, designing solar water heaters about 12 years ago. Um, and, and, and from there, it was always there. Um, so quite here, three years out, I started researching again, looking back at it again, to then say, well, look, this is where we're actually going to take um, our design skills and concentrate it in here, yeah, as opposed to concentrating it in some other area of, of, of interest. So since we're in Barbados, talk about the uh, growth and the possibilities for growth of the solar energy uh, market and solar energy for people's houses in this in, in Barbados. Yeah. Well, first of all, I think the domestic market has to go through a process of, of re-education, all right? And that's what we've been doing for the past year. Um, and, and I need to discuss this first before I go to the, the, the other aspect. The, the reality is that most people seem to think that you can just up and power our existing inefficient lifestyle using solar, yeah? The grid has a way of making people think very, like a, it's an enslaving way of thinking. It's like you have a move off the plantation, mm -hmm. infusing you with dependency. You just come flip the switch and everything is there. So you don't have to live nor act responsible. So there needs to be a massive re-educational process to show people how to live independently. And I tell them, until, you're, until you experience energy independence, you are not free. So when we talk about all the economic stuff and the bank and stuff like that, the only reason why you depend upon the bank is because the bank is what's facilitating part of your energy. Right. But if you're generating your own energy, you're not dependent on the system. And the system resists that. And we are so much bought into the system way of thinking and operating that there needs to be an educational process to show people that, hey, it's not about developing a solar system to sustain my existing lifestyle is adjusting my lifestyle to live off of solar. Right, right. I think that's a very important point that a lot of people don't really get to. They don't ever get there. Now one of the things that people talk <laughs> about with the limitations of solar energy and the practicality of it, they talk about the pricing. Yeah, they but, you see, it's but solar... there's no limitations. Okay. You see there's no limitations. What's happening is waste. Okay. It's waste. You have the Irish house in Barbados, right? using about 55% electricity that they don't need to use. Okay. You understand? But tell me, tell me you can't afford it. You could afford it. But you're right now trying to sustain a lifestyle that you cannot afford. Right. You understand where I'm coming from? You, 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 the, the average household can live off of 7 kilowatts. Okay. All the refrigeration needs, the like he needs, the security needs, everything. 7 kilowatts can deliver that. But you know what the average household currently uses? How much? 17. 10 kilowatts more than they need. Uh, with a TV that's left on almost 24 hours, with the uh, microwave, um, electric stove, electric oven, all of these myths, I call them, that we don't really need to sustain a quality lifestyle. Right. Right? So then you come up, make door names you're knocking. Uh, Mark, how much would it cost me to, to power this lifestyle? And I tell you, to power that lifestyle is gonna cost you $60,000. You tell me that's expensive. Right? But here, I can run an entire kiosk with fridge, lights, all the same utilities that an Irish one has for $9,000. So you see the difference I mean? Mm -hmm. So it's about adjusting your lifestyle to live off a of solar and not trying to build a solar system to power your existing lifestyle. And that is the most important point that people need to get. So education and energy efficiency. So for example, a person who may be able to afford $60,000 in solar, but still he's coming, he got a dryer, even though the sun outside is drying and the, and the, and the line can work just as good for drying clothes. He, he used the dryer to dry every load, electric oven, electric stove, mm -hmm. 
he is wasteful. He mm. she shouldn't even be thinking about solar at all because he's not living green. Right. He's living wasteful and inefficient. So 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 he so he's still part of the problem, even though he gone green. You know what I'm saying, Yeah. Yeah, because he's saying to people that hey, I forget six thousand dollars I can live as I like. And then the the ozone, the the carbon footprint, the environmental issues and that kind of stuff. It doesn't matter because he's mm. still he's still living irresponsible. You understand mm -hmm. where I come from? And that's mm -hmm. a very passionate point for me uh, in solar. And that's, that's where I guess me and my customers is kind of um, not see eye to eye very often. Mm -hmm. And that's why we move far so slow because there has to be adjustment. And we in the in, in these small islands cannot afford to sustain a North American lifestyle. Right. Yeah? The sun right. can power us our island lifestyle and we live very well. Like um, cooking with the sun. Mm -hmm. Uh, baking with solar, roasting a chicken, taking two mirrors, putting them opposite one another, generate over 360 degrees Fahrenheit, which is more than an oven. Right. And you can bake a chicken inside of there. Um, distilling water. The, the, the other things that is possible with this stuff here is um, not just the cooking and that kind of stuff, but the, the barbecuing again, which is far better to eat and that kind of stuff. And um, Barbadians and Caribbean people not, not living like that. Mm -hmm. We're trying to live as though we are in Europe and not allowing the island culture and the island way of life to impact on us. Yeah? MovementTunes.com, the number one site for positive music downloading.